see if there's an agreement with them, there's that's a different story. Answer to that question um, because right now I see that that could be legally problematic for the applicant. That's fine. Go ahead, Victoria. Um, I also like to see um, 20 feet. Where's 20 feet that's existing, and where's the 80 feet? I would like that plotted out so I can see exactly. Okay. Is the gate 100 feet from the uh, edge no. of the property? The uh, the 20 would... feet is in here. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Is in here. The 80 feet, 80 foot extension is down here. Okay. So it's back here. It is not shown or dimensioned on there what is existing as uh, frontage or what is proposed. But based on this and then the 80 foot addition on here or reconstruction uh, provides the 100 feet of frontage for that lot. And how much of that was going to be improved just up to that spot is the right here. This is where the paved berm is. That mm -hmm. diagonal line is the paved berm. Right. So anything beyond that would be improved. So that section. That section, correct. Because they the skip actually is. own the, their property line. That is correct. Their property line goes all the way down to here. But you're not proposing to improve that. You're no. only proposing. Okay. No, only so that's to why. Get I, that's why I want to know. Okay. What I'm looking at. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Well, this is actually a question for Maureen. Maureen, is there anything within our ordinance that says that you could not put a gate in the middle of a private access way? I don't think there is. Um, so in theory, you, you could build a private access way, um, but kind of have a gate that goes right in the middle of it? The way our ordinance is structured, we private access ways are the baby streets of the ordinance. And because they are the lowest standards, we only allow one house to have access on a private access way. The expectation is once more than one house needs access, you must upgrade to a private road. So converting from a private access way to a private road is actually anticipated in our ordinance. Um, anytime you do something that is inconsistent with a planning board approval, you've got to amend the approval. So, you know, when they put the gate in, there was nothing that was being changed from the private access way because the private access way ended just beyond the turnaround on the Munns property. When the town approved Cottage Brook and Astor Lane was approved, again, the gate was not there at that time and there was nothing about the gate that contradicted what was going on with Cottage Brook. If this goes ahead, then it may require inherent in it amendments to the private access way for the Munns, that, for the property that the Munns now own. But it's not something that I think the planning board, that the, the property owner, I don't believe has the right to say, no, I'm not gonna agree to those amendments. Because the property, or Mr. Munns, does not in and of himself own that private road. And I'm, you know, going into the, my favorite topic, paper streets. But um, probably this applicant will need to provide the planning board with a legal explanation of what rights they have. But my understanding is that everyone that owns a lot in a subdivision has rights in the roads shown on the plan on the subdivision. So I don't believe there would be anything that would prevent one property owner from upgrading a private access way to a private road. Does that make sense? Okay, okay Jim, you had a question. Um, I don't think we've addressed this. The, the 22 feet width and the 18 feet width of the roads, is that, I guess maybe it's more toward Maureen, are we concerned with that reduction uh, to 18 feet? Well, 
this is a private road that's being requested and it's being requested because there's already a private access way there so you you really need to go up to the from the baby road standard to the regular road standard so a private road is supposed to meet the same standards as a local public road with three explicit things removed you're not required to pave it you're not required to put a sidewalk on one side and you're not required to put street trees adjacent to it in addition, in the subdivision ordinance, it explicitly gives the planning board authority to waive things. I believe it's 1635, it's right near the end of the ordinance, so, and I can read that to you if you want, but it, it explicitly says the planning board has the authority to grant waivers when the intent of the waiver isn't to just undermine the ordinance and the waiver will result in better neighborhood design. So you do have flexibility to reduce the width of a private road from 22 feet to a lesser width. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Jim. Um, it seems that one of the factors, though, in deciding whether to grant that waiver would be whether or not the gate is there and that road becomes subject to more traffic. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I agree with that. Go ahead, Andrew. Um, one thing that's bothered me um, quite a bit, actually, with this proposal is you've got a public way, Astro Lane, becoming a private way, Astro Lane extension, or is it South just Street. called? Sorry? South Street. Well, I mean, it becomes a private way. Is that that's still going to be called Astro Lane? Is that true? The new, the, the new, proposed, the new improvement. proposed improvement. Yes. Um, and then it becomes a different name at some point. And if there's no gate there that demarcates that transition, I do feel like there could be, you know, uh, emergency services issue with that. I also wonder in that regard, which takes precedence in terms of naming. You've got the Munzes who are on South Street, their, their, their driveway now en enters on Astor Lane extension. Um, uh, who wins that battle? Like, are they now named Astor Lane or are they South? Go ahead. It, ne neither one of them wins the battle. We have an addressing ordinance and the uh, assessor is the one that makes that determination. And so he has already made the decision that the lot that's owned by Ms. Burlam and her partner is going to be a, a, the address of 8 Astor Lane. And following whatever the planning board decides, he may or may not decide that other lots have to have their address changed. So there's a process for that. There's, it's, and it's separate and distinct from the planning board. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me, it seems to me the crucial thing here would be the site walk and evaluating what's going on up there and a lot of the decisions will flow from that right. step. So I'm wondering if the completeness thing, which we've now put to bed, is a good point to you know, take a deep breath, have the site walk, and then start talking uh, substance on the merits. Uh, I, the reason I brought up substance is I wanted some of these questions to come out so that when we do do the site walk, then they sure. know some of the big questions that everybody has. And uh, so. Oh, one last question. Go ahead. I, I wasn't clear. Is uh, 8 Astor Lane going to be joining the subdivision? No. No, thank you. So, when do we want to do a site walk? I heard... The sun comes up early. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that the submissions due at the end of the week. Is that true? Yes. Uh, yes. However, when we have these very late in the month meetings, we've sometimes let applicants submit the following Monday or maybe even the following Tuesday. So if you can get your site walk in this week, that may give the applicant enough time to respond to whatever comes out of the site walk and, and revise plans and resubmit them. What's it looking like for everybody? I can, I know you said the sun comes up really early, <laughs> but I also know I also know what that neighborhood is like before school, and I personally do not want to be down in there when kids are, when potentially being in there when kids are meeting the bus. Okay. So I have, 
I have delivery trucks that go over there and they do not go until after the school bus is gone. So. End of day. End of day is fine with me. I'm, I can't do Wednesday. I'm gone next Wednesday for about a week. Starting so we got to do it before? Yeah. I'm and not then, available the rest of this week. No, it's Saturday morning. Zero dark 30? Saturday morning? If we did Saturday, I would prefer if we did it around like 10, because I'm getting in at 12.30 that morning. I'm gone Saturday. <laughs> but, Sunday? 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 Still gone. You can't go. You have to stay. <laughs> So Saturday of 10 is no good? No, that, that works for me. It works for me. Joe's not here. He's not here on Sunday either. Oh. Friday? I can go on my own. What about Tuesday after? Tuesday, next Tuesday? No, like no, tomorrow. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, I'm not yeah. available. I could do that. Jonathan can't. Okay. Hey, you guys can go without me. I don't Who think do you like more, Joe or me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Saturday I really, or Tuesday. Based on some of the questions, I don't really don't think you want to. Be the 30th. Monday, the thirtieth. Thirtieth, week from today. Okay, works for me. Yeah. Late afternoon, early evening. Five, five thirty. Five. No, I don't get out of work till about that time. Uh, five thirty works better. Five thirty. Five thirty is fine. Really. Five thirty next Monday. Can babies be invited? Yes. The, the, the okay. 30th? Oh, yeah, come before. Sorry? The, the 30th? The 30th. The 30th at 530? Can we go 6? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is PM. This is PM. I know. All right. 530. Okay. You can wear your skis, Jim. <laughs> can you make it at 530, Jim? Yeah, I can. I'll make it. Okay. I'm whining. 530, Monday, April 30th. Where should we convene? Where can we put our cars? I would, I would park Ambassador right at the Ambassador Lane. It's public road. You can park on either side of the public road. Okay. On the Astor side or South on Street? On the Astor side. On the, on the public road Astor side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Second Monday. Can you, yeah, didn't I ask you if you could come. No. <laughs> Details. You good? That's good, yep. Okay. Monday, April 30th, 530. April 30th, 530, correct. So I have, I have a question for the board and for the applicant. Go ahead. Um, our, would, it, would it help the applicant if you didn't need to submit until May 1st, which is Tuesday? Well, the, the critical thing that has come up uh, is obviously the gate and then traffic. That's a, that's a, a critical piece that takes some time if that is an issue that has to be addressed. Um, the stormwater, I'm not concerned about uh, regrading, putting a driveway in culverts. That's minor, uh, but in regards to uh, traffic, um, I have to get a consultant to do that because I'm not a traffic engineer. So, so waiting yeah. until Monday, Tuesday doesn't help you? No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't, but it, it's, a, it's, it's all depending on how much more discussion is going on with the traffic. And, and, and once and, you walk and we, the site... And we won't know until the next meeting. That is, that is correct. And also, once you walk the site um, and yourselves make a determination of which way you would drive, that may help you in your determination also. So can I ask another question? Go ahead. So do you feel, based on the information you have right now, that you can make the deadline for um, April 27th for submitting? Uh, that's this Friday? That's this Friday. <clears throat> I prefer Monday. <laughs> Is board okay with the end yes, of day Monday? Yes, thank yes. you. Yes. All right. Thank you. 
Any other questions? No. So do we, do we have a motion? No, you may not. You have something, you may submit written comments to the town planner and she'll forward them to the planning board. I need a motion. Go right ahead. Motion to table. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Margaret Burlam for review of a private road extension from Astor Lane to create road frontage for the lot located at 8 Astor Lane be tabled to the regular May 15, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Do I have a second? Jim? All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, Two Old Ocean House Road Subdivision Amendment. Margaret Angel and Nathaniel Fick are requesting an amendment from, a pre from the previously approved Hidden Court Subdivision to replace buffering um, removed outside of the building envelope, section 16-2-5. Amendment to a previously approved subdivision. We're going over completeness and public hearing. If you're leaving, please leave quickly so we can move on with the agenda and quietly. Hi. Hi. Let me know when you want me to start. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the noise to. We have quite a little echo chamber here, so. All right, go ahead. Hi. Introduce yourself and. I'm Margaret Angel of Two Old Ocean House Road, and I'm here to propose our remedy to the notice of violation that we received on December 17th, uh, in December 2017. Uh, the remedy in the materials I sent constitutes what we discussed and what was recommended at the workshop on January 2nd. Um, a brief, just to remind you of what happened, um, in October, we were granted a permit to build on the lot at Two Old Ocean House Road. In early November, we began excavation, and the southern end of our building is right up against the no-build buffer between our property and um, the line that goes between the Governales lot and the Strout lot. And uh, when we began excavation, the process of excavation disturbed the tree roots of three uh, trees in the buffer zone. Um, and then there was a windstorm, which made them very unstable. And our contractor took out the three trees to provide for safety in the, in the pit, in the construction pit. Uh, and Ben McDougall came by to inspect the foundation footings, footings and served us with the notice of violation for the loss of those three trees. Uh, in January, when I came, um, I offered a mitigation strategy of planting two trees for every one tree lost in the vicinity of where they were lost. Um, and you all recommended two things. One, that I consult with the town tree warden on the species of trees, uh, because he's concerned about the variety um, of the tree canopy in the town, and that I talk to my neighbors. Um, to get their approval. And in, uh, in the materials I submitted, you'll see that we did meet with the town tree warden uh, 
Todd Robbins, we walked with him and he recommended that we plant two Fraser fir, two balsam fir, one hornbeam, and one service berry. The list um, made our neighbors happy. <laughs> they, they were confused why we selected those six and we explained that it was the town tree warden. Um, so they are on board with it. And you will see enclosed is a letter from Frank and Terry Ann, Frank Governelli and Terry Ann Scriven. Um, one set of neighbors affected and the other uh, from Frank Strout indicating that he and his sister and brother who co-own the property, um, the other property support Terry Ann and Frank's letter. Um, in, in the enclosed materials, I provided a site plan with the locations of the six trees, which the neighbors are on board with, um, as well as the endorsement from the neighbors. Thank you. I'll open it up to public comment regarding completeness of this mission. And seeing no one coming forward, I will close it to public comment. It's just a formality here. So, all right. Board, questions regarding completeness? Anybody? All right. I don't, go ahead. Oh, did you have a comment? No, you go I ahead. I have a motion. Oh, I, no, I have, a, okay. I have some questions. Uh, in, in the uh, memo prepared by the town planner, uh, there were some items related to completeness that uh, were brought up as possibly to possibly incomplete items. And I'm emphasizing possibly. So I wanted to get people's reaction to um, demonstration of right title and interest. Um, the a plan that is it was submitted based on is not the most current amendment plan. And I'm just looking to see if anybody cares about these. What well, is different than, I mean? The subdivision's been amended, and I believe the change was related to some property on the other side of, see this hash marked property? Yeah. That was, I believe that was the amendment. It's my error, I submitted the wrong. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just making sure that we cover all the bases here. And if nobody has a problem with this, then we're we're fine. So go ahead, Peter. Yeah, no, this is I, to me is a fairly ministerial act, uh, taking three trees that were taken down, replacing with six trees, and, and and no respect do I see anything else happening. And so I would think that this information uh, is are things that we could do without. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear from somebody. <laughs> I didn't want to assume it. So, all right. Everybody in agreement with Peter? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I noticed um, there was one item about um, E. It said no information regarding the planting procedures have been provided. I remember there was a note saying this was going to be done by June. Or by June. Yeah. June. Um, and I know you're you're working with your neighbors, which is always nice. I like when neighbors do work together. As you can see, when they don't work together, what happens? You might have just observed that. So I'm glad you're working with your neighbors, and I'm assuming the neighbors will also be anticipating those plantings, and will probably be in touch with you in regards to those plantings. So for that reason, watching all these neighbors working so nicely together, I'm willing to also waive some of these other standards, which normally, you know, I don't waive anything. I know. But I it know. is, I'm it's good faith. I'm, I'm glad you're doing the right thing and I'm glad you went to the tree warden and you're working with your neighbors, so that's why I'm willing to go along with these waivers. I agree, they're administrative. Okay. Go ahead, John. Just a brief question for Maureen. Maureen, we have a code enforcement. We'll just monitor this to make sure it's done. I feel confident he will be, yes. Okay, thank you. Now, if you'd like to make a motion, Jonathan, you may. Oh, me? Sure. <laughs> All right, to be it ordered that be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Margaret Angel and Nathan, uh, Nathaniel Fick. Uh, Flick? 
for review of an amendment to the third amended hidden court subdivision plan to replace trees removed from the buffer be deemed complete. And Joe seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. So now I'm going to open this to public hearing. I believe that's the next item. So, yep. So, open the, this to public hearing on the substance of this submission. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing and turn it over to the planning board for questions and or a motion. Go ahead, Joe. I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Motion for approval. Finding of fact, Margaret Angel and Nathaniel Fick are requesting review of an amendment to the third amended hidden court subdivision plan to replace trees removed from the buffer, which requires review under section 16-2-5 amendments of the subdivision ordinance. The replanting, two, the replanting plan must be accomplished in a manner that promotes survival of the new trees that does not cause erosion or impact potential underground utilities. Three, the applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Margaret Angel and Nathaniel Fick for the review of an amendment to the third amended hidden court subdivision plan to replace trees removed from the buffer be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the planting sizes shall be the minimum size required at the time of planting. Two, that the planting be done consistent with sound Aber aboricultural standards and that any disturbed so soil be mulched or loamed and seeded after the plantings are installed. Three, that prior to planting, the applicant confirm that no utilities are located in the planting area. Do I have a second? Jim? Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. We're on a roll tonight. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda. Used car sales zoning amendment. The town council has referred to the planning board an amendment to the, to the business A district shore road to allow used car sales in conjunction with a repair garage. Section 19-10-3, Zoning Ordinance Amendments, Public Hearing. All right. Want to summarize this, Maureen? Certainly. Do it so much better than I do. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, and the applicant, which I believe is in the audience, uh, owns a service center on Shore Road and would like to be able to um, sell a small number of used cars as part of their operation of a repair garage. The code enforcement officer has determined that under the current zoning that's not allowed. So what you have in front of you are two amendments to the zoning ordinance. One is adding a definition of repair garage so that we know what we're talking about and it's just your traditional any building used for commercial purposes to repair one of vehicles, etc. And then the second piece is the, the more substantial piece. The planning board decided that they were uh, okay to recommend sales of used cars only if it was related to a repair garage and only in the BA district that's located on Shore Road. So in the BA district, um, under permitted uses, you've added after repair garage, quote, in the Shore Road business, a district, a repair garage may include up to three vehicles at any time for sale. That's the text of your amendment. All right. I'm going to open this for a public hearing on this uh, zoning, proposed zoning amendment. Seeing no one, uh, I'm going to close the public hearing and go to come to the board for any of their questions, comments, any proposed revisions, or are we good to move this back to the town council? I'm good. I have a motion for the board to consider. Go right ahead. Be it ordered that based on the draft amendments and the information presented, the planning board 
recommends the used car sales amendments. Second. Uh, we can discuss now. You said, okay, used cars. I, it says um, that it would be able to sell up to three vehicles. Do we need to define it as used vehicles then? Okay, I'm just. Hmm. Do you say I cars? Know. I mean, uh, the question would be if someone wanted to sell a brand new car versus a used car, would, would you really care for the purposes of land use regulation? <laughs> I just, you know, I heard I mean, news the limit, news. the limit is, I mean, I think your real concern is that the limit is three in any one time. Okay. Go ahead, Peter. Well, it's maybe somewhat close to Victoria's point, but you're also referring to vehicles rather than automobiles or cars. Do you contemplate motorcycles, motorcycles ATVs, pickup trucks? Uh, in, in other words, do you want to specify the type of vehicle, or do we care? Oh, that's true. Well, the uh, proposed amendments say vehicles, and maybe so. Maybe our maybe our motion should say vehicles as well. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. The proposed changes to the zoning say use the word vehicles. So maybe our maybe um, we should revise our motion to say yeah. vehicles as More well. Vehicles. So. Well, Go right ahead. The term used car sales amendment is just the name of this particular effort. It doesn't have any legal weight. Well, no, I understand, you know, but I'm yeah. saying what do we intend? Are we intending this to be limited to an automobile type venture, or how would you feel about motorcycles, ATVs, et cetera? They're all, they're all vehicles. Mm -hmm. Or I would suggest that if that's something you want to address, this needs to go back to a workshop to work out that definition. But it says <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um Then we would need to vote down this, this proposed motion and go back. Personally, I can live in vehicles, but you, you may invite someday conversation, but I don't think it's a big risk. I think the key is three. Yeah. I'm fine with how it's written. I think the key is three. Oh, that, that yeah. too, for sure. Go ahead, John. What did you say, Jonathan? I'm sorry. I was just saying uh, because I seconded the motion that I'm fine with, and I that, that I think safety adequately protects everybody. Yeah. And plus, the town council has final approval on this anyway. So, all right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. We go to the town council for their, well, whatever meeting they decide to put it on. Yes, <laughs> All right. Any other motions that anyone would like to put forward? Like adjourning? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Jim makes a motion. We adjourn. Second. Joe seconds it. All those in favor? I believe it was unanimous. Peter was putting his papers away. <laughs> All right. Done. Do we get hurt? Do you need to do your first one?